China is banning any and all orders of NVIDIA chips, current and future orders. What does this mean for NVIDIA, for AI, and for the U.S.? Let's talk about it. It's important to note that China's order isn't just from government, but it has also been communicated with the corporate sector, the private sector, with Chinese companies to scrap even their existing orders. And reports have come out saying that China and Chinese companies make up between 13 to 30 percent of NVIDIA's orders. Yes, some orders are made through other countries and then there's some sort of shipping finagling that you do and it ends up in China. But 13 to 30 percent is a significant amount of money that NVIDIA generates through China, which is why you'll remember that Donald Trump had come out and said, you know what, we're not doing anything with China. We're not shipping any chips to China at all. And then Jensen Huang had come forward and said, hey, how about we just give them these types of chips? We'll make new chips. It'll be of lesser quality. And then finally, Donald Trump relented after taking what was it like a 10 percent margin off of that. Jensen Huang still very happy because that's still a lot of money that they weren't able to access. So now for China to come forward and say, nope, we actually don't want your subpar chips. And it really begs the question, is this going to be a breaking point for AI, at least the U.S.-centric narrative? Because now China's going to have to build chips of their own. There's really no other country they can go to to backfill that U.S. dependency. They're going to have to develop this from the ground up within China. And personally, I, for one, don't blame China for going this route. Sure, it might not be the most diplomatic thing to do, but neither has been the way that the U.S. has been playing ball with them when it comes to chips. The CHIPS Act was introduced by the Biden administration, and under that, China wasn't granted access to the best CHIPS. And through that, China's reliance on U.S. tech was made evident, not only to everyone, but especially to China. And I don't think they like that very much. I think one of the important things to mention here is that the United States with the AI race, needs everybody to be in the AI race. And this is super important because, of course, not only are they ahead, but they are also the providers of technology. And so it creates a central nervous system that interfaces across almost all countries in the world. And so when you hear that the other superpower is going to disconnect and not play in this race anymore and not play according to the United States' rules, it's super, super important. China also says AI is an important part, but it's not going to be the only part of the Chinese ethos and economy. And they have manufacturing that goes for them. They have a lot of other industries that are really successful from the automotive to manufacturing across the different spheres. And I think that this is a very, very clever play because also they own probably the vast majority of the entire supply chain for AI. So being able to build up the capacity, especially as a strategic asset for the country, I can imagine that they can actually catch up in time relatively quickly. And having said that, there's a lot of researchers and talent and money in China to be able to go after this. So I think it's a very clever power play. And we're also starting to see not an exodus, but a movement of really prominent AI scientists that are of Chinese origin, but have been educated, have worked, have lived in the U.S., now starting to migrate back. And it might be because of visa issues. It might just be because they are now feeling patriotic and they want to be part of that movement. But that skill, that human talent is also very present. And we saw some of the effects of this, right? So when DeepSeek came out, there was a tragedy for the Silicon Valley pundits. And we saw over a trillion dollars of market cap loss, maybe more. And in the end, what were they doing? They brought fancy math. They didn't use the latest chips. They were able to actually pioneer some things that had not been done in Silicon Valley. And so this is a very clear signal that they can do it and do it possibly better. And there's also another discussion as well, because I think going away from U.S. and China, you have a lot of countries, a lot of regions in the world that are talking about tech sovereignty, AI sovereignty, and the EU wants this capability. And we're starting to see Switzerland that's also launched their own LLMs. We're starting to see UAE and Saudi that have done huge investments. And also, funny enough, there's a huge investments from the United States to the UK to be able to create U.S.-centric AI capabilities within the U.K. So with all of these movements, I actually think that this was, again, not just a masterful play from the Chinese, but I also think that the gap that we're going to see between the U.S. and China and everybody else is just going to be so vast that they're going to be isolated. I'm finding it so interesting to analyze this China-U.S. relationship. I mean, we had that whole debacle in the beginning of the year where tariff rates were astronomical and then now essentially negligible. Then we have the whole TikTok fiasco where it felt like China was bending over backwards and just giving into everything the U.S. wanted. But now for China to take that step forward and say, nope, we don't want your chips. We can have our own chips. We'll figure it out. No, thanks. Clearly, they're not giving into the U.S. 
yes, there's still pushback. It's still China. And what I would give to be a fly on the wall in Beijing and understand the intricacies that they are going through and what they are debating. I mean, only time will tell, but I am excited to follow and see where this nets out. What a great time also to make this announcement when we are starting to see a lot of research, a lot of evidence that AI, while it's a miraculous technology, is actually not reaping the benefits for the users and the companies that are actually investing into it. And so in order for the Chinese to be able to make this announcement now, it's going to even deepen the rift of these non-believers and even the believers that are sort of disappointed with the returns on investment that are happening. 